Hey class, this is Nick Sensky at Iowa State University, and today I got a lesson for you about orthographic projection with respect to elevations. So the assignment that we're doing this week, giving you guys a set of precedent buildings and uh, houses, and we're going to draw an elevation uh, of that building or house. But I haven't given you um, a lot of information about the elevation. I've given you enough, but you're still going to have to do some thinking and you're going to have to make use of the way the drawings uh, work. And what I mean by that is that, if, as, you, as you know, if you have something that's a plan and it talks to the elevation, right? Like if this is actually the elevation that I want to draw. I'm not going to give you this, but this is an example of what I would want to see from you. Um, I have the plan. You can see that if we project, you know, down to it, you know, that these are part of a set, right? And if I would even try to draw a floor plan, if I had the elevations, I could actually project some of these edges. If I had all four edges or all four sides of it, I could reconstruct a lot of the um, of the floor plan. And that's the way that orthographic projection works. The drawings are projected off each other. Here I have a section, and here I have his knees. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, and um, I have a section, and the section also talks to the elevation, right? Because I can get the heights of things, I can get the placements of windows, I can get I can get some of the uh, some of the structures. As a matter of fact, as I'm looking at this, I'm incorrect here. I believe this is actually a side elevation. It's still useful to us though, because um, you can see that the windows that are here are the same proportions, the same uh, horizontal lines that we get uh, here. You can see the same thing with this reveal here. Section would give me similar information. Um, so whether it's sections or elevations or things, they all talk to each other. We can use those to construct the missing information um, that we have from this elevation. So um, my file that I give you is gonna be laid out pretty much like this, where I'm gonna have the plans, and I'm gonna have multiple floor plans, and probably multiple elevations and sections. But I will have a red line, and that is where you will begin your elevation drawing. This is this represents the ground, okay, right? The most important uh, thing. I will also give you a printout at some scale, probably quarter or eighth inch, whatever fits on 11 by 17. I would give you a printed drawing of the elevation. And the idea is not to trace that drawing that I give you, but to use it to fill in any gaps that might that might occur between you know any of these things. If you're really designing a building, of course, you'd be filling in those gaps yourself. Uh, if you were looking at a building, you would have photographs of the building that you could look at or uh, um, uh, other sketches or drawings. Now, that being said, you can supplement the drawings I give you with anything that you find online. You can go on and look at photographs of the building. You can look at uh, other plans that people have drawn. Like That's fine. Just don't trace them and don't trace this and don't steal any drawings that you find and um, use them okay it'll be really obvious trust me um, and i'll consider that plagiarism so the goal of this is not to get the assignment done the goal is to learn how to draw an elevation and to learn in general how orthographic projection uh, works so again i'm going to give this layout to you guys um, the procedure that you would you would start with right once you've got the uh, line and let's just pretend that this thing doesn't exist right we don't have it we have a reference to kind of know what's going on but you would start by by taking and drawing. I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer here. But you would you would start by taking and drawing some uh, vertical lines. Let's say right. So I know that like this is the edge of the building. So I'm gonna go ahead and oops, my layer's turned off. Yeah, that won't do me any good. You take and draw a line from the edge of the building. It's still turned off. All right, let's do this. Okay, one more time. Take a line. And then you can kind of snap it to this end if you want. Nothing you can do if you're inclined, you know, is to uh, is to drag it past. It doesn't matter because we're going to use these as a grid. We're not exactly going to um, exactly going to use them as is. We're just these are like construction lines. Okay. Now, before you even really start doing this, you really do have to understand what the building, you know, is. This is the Bauhaus. You know, this, is a, this is a famous like design school. Um, these are stairs. These are the edges, so don't don't misunderstand what you're doing. Like the first thing I'm gonna do is just rough out the building, just the general form of the building. And I'm just gonna do this relatively quickly here. Be a little careful with it. Okay, so I've got so you can see there's a main building, and then there's like a little stair, like a doorway, and then there is a a little side building. 
this pulls way back, and then there's this kind of breezeway, and then there's a secondary uh, building. Okay. Then the other lines I'm going to get, I'm going to go ahead and take from here. So I look at, and, and if you look at the drawing, because you'll have it, you can see that the roof line is the same as this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and drag, go ahead and draw some lines from here. Now notice, excuse me, I'm not using the template that I gave you. Um, you should probably do that. Like when you get the drawings, go ahead and copy paste them into the template. That way you can start using line weights um, the way we've been using them. So I'm going to go ahead and do this line you know, here. You know, that's going to be pretty important. And so I just got, you know, and then I can, so that's the kind of rough, the rough building. Now if I look at this, you can see that I get, it's the same roof line. We're very lucky. So we have this and we have this and then we have this building. And what we don't have would be the height of this. And necessarily, we wouldn't necessarily have the height of this piece either, but we can, we can use a lot of that. So um, what, I, what I would do is, you know, if you're starting to draw this, just go ahead to a layer and you can begin to actually draw, you know, parts, parts of the building. So if I trace over that with white, I can start to draw, you know, this piece and I can start to draw this other piece here. Now I'm not, these are not like the final lines, but they're like the, the lines I'm going to start to use as I, as I draft the building. And I'm gonna go ahead and keep keep those for now because I can't I can't quite use them. But um, let's see here. You know, I could do things too if I'm not using that construction line anymore. Um, actually, I'm gonna go ahead. I do need those construction lines. I need one here, and I need one here. Those are good. And these other ones, I'm not really gonna mess with. So I don't need this one anymore, and I don't need this one anymore right and in fact I don't need actually I don't need these anymore either I do need these because I haven't quite quite figured these out and you'd be like oh Nick you know I don't have I don't have dimensions for those um, also I should mention that this these drawings do not quite line up with this it's not a good set of drawings these are from a textbook um, but they're they're going to be they're going to be sufficient, and I'm not too worried about whether or not they exactly line up. I'm worried about whether or not it looks like the facade, like whether or not it looks like what you know it's supposed to look like. Okay, this is just an exercise. We're not going to build this thing, right? I gave you a printout, uh, and um, and you're going to use that printout to figure out dimensions that you don't have from these other drawings. Okay, so what you do is take that printout, say it's like eight scale. You're going to measure this line here right and then that's going to tell you basically how far to um to offset let's just draw a line here so okay so i could be totally wrong about this but you can say like okay that that line is 42 feet so we'll say offset and then the distance is going to be 42 feet pretty close okay let's call it 38 37 offset uh, hang on a second. Yeah, offset. 37. Yeah. Well, 38 would have been better. Okay. So anyway, using the dimensions from the printout that you measure by hand, get your scale, right? So if you measure it, um, let's see here. Oops. So since that was, I said it was 8 scale. So let's call, it, let's call it 38 or 37. Well, I said 37, so 37 divided by 8. So that would have been, that might have been, ooh, man, actually, that's a terrible scale. Uh, let's do, let's call it maybe it was 16 scale. So 37 divided by uh, 16. So that line would have been 2.3 inches, let's call it, right? So you'd measure that and multiply it by 16. That's the number of feet, right? If it's a 16th of an inch to a foot. Okay, so look at those calculations. I'll get the I'll get the proper dimensions for you. But um, anyway, you can use your ruler and do a very good job. And if you look at it and it doesn't look quite right, 
look at the drawing, look at the distance, you know, and kind of fudge it. But but do try to measure. If you start to just do things by eyeball, it's going to look really uh, strange. Okay. You can also do things too where you can say, oh God, how am I going to measure each of these each of these individual stairs? I mean, that's like tiny, right? Well, measure the height distance between the ground and the top stair, and then you know that there are three treads, so you can divide that by three pretty easily. Um, it's also, you know, helpful just to look at the center lines of things. So if you know, you know, for example, these um, columns here, you could you could find those from this drawing. You know, look at them from the center, or you could you could draw the edges of it, I guess, too. But you can you can measure things from the center, and then if you know the width, then you can get them. The centering is just to get them in the right configuration, and then you can find the width from your from your printout uh, drawing. Same thing with the windows. If you can find the edges and you can count the number of windows that there are, then you can figure out how many windows there are. Okay. Important things to look at. I mean, look for some detail. So it might be hard to read on the drawing, I guess. But if you can tell that there are breaks, you know, again, try to measure those as a center line and then give them an equal distance. Proportion is very important. A lot of these are repetitive, and that's how you're going to get them to look right, is if you're getting the proportions uh, right. Okay. Sometimes you'll see things too where like, you know, these breaks in the windows are actually based on the structure. So you can project this down and then use that to create the break. At this point, don't worry about line weight, folks. Just get all the lines in. Like basically what you want to end up with is this drawing. We'll look at line weights in a later in a later class. Um, so if you look at this, let's turn this off here. I mean, I did same thing, you know, and you can use another color for the horizontal lines if you want to. But um, this is the practice that people do when they're projecting elevations. And this is going to serve you well you know, for this assignment and also for when you're thinking about your assignment for 2.30. Um, you don't always want to just start with a composition with the, with the elevation. You don't really design buildings from the outside in. Think about the plans and the structure. Think about the order of that space. Think about how it's constructed in section and the thickness of that elevation and then project that into an elevation and resolve it. You know, and then project what you've designed back in the elevation back onto your plans and uh, sections. Okay, So it's kind of an iterative, kind of ping-pong-y uh, way of thinking about it. It's never just a straightforward uh, process. There's a lot of backward movement and forward movement as you develop a design. Okay, But when you're done, you'll have a coordinated uh, set of drawings. Okay, so take a look at these precedents. Get your printouts from your TA or from me. Uh, let us know if you have any questions, and uh, good luck.